Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre were shooting for their second straight win last Sunday on the doubles tournament of champions. But the match against Norm Bork and Ed Emerson was pretty much dead even, coming down to the last five boxes. That was when the Morgan St. Pierre team came up with some critical and entertaining marks. Oh! oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Spare on strike for Paul St. Pierre. Let's take another look at that one. I don't think he was going after the wood. <laughs> a 398 and another win. So today, Morgan and St. Pierre try to keep it rolling against Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney. This is week three of the Tri State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. WNDS Sports and Tri State Megabucks present Stars and Strikes Doubles. Stars and Strikes Doubles is sponsored in part by Somerville Lumber. Stars and Strikes Doubles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Park Place Lanes. Hour number two here on the wins. This is week three of the Tournament of Champions. And now, of course, we move to the doubles Tournament of Champions, where uh, Mike Morgan is the story here, as he has been so far in the singles event. He's got two wins in a row there, and he's got two wins in a row here with his partner, Paul St. Pierre. They changed the name of the show to the Mike Morgan Show, I think, <laughs> the way he's going. He's been bowling terrific. And, uh, and last week, they bowled well as a team here in the doubles as well. Well, now we have a little bit of uh, news to inform you of. Uh, of course, the tie that was created when Steve Vadney and Joe Ashline uh, qualified for the Tournament of Champions in doubles just a few weeks ago. We told you we'd be settling that tie as they were even at 412 with Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. Well, that tie was broken, and uh, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn were the winners of that one-string roll-off. They had uh, seven marks in the string, in the roll-off string, including five in a row at one stretch. So uh, that means Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney slide in at that number three spot. So that means uh, in order to win three matches in a row, Morgan and St. Pierre will have to beat a pretty tough team. Well, either one of those teams would have been tough, but uh, this certainly uh, these fellows have been here before. All right, let's talk about these two teams now for today's show, week three. First of all, our number six seeded team. They've won two matches already with a 399 two weeks ago and then a 398 last week. Mike Morgan from Lynn and his partner from Manchester, New Hampshire, Paul St. Pierre. Okay, Mike comes in averaging 126 and a high single of 188. Uh, Paul St. Pierre, 125 and 197. As you said, bowling very consistently. And they have uh, just missed 400 triples in their first two weeks on the show. But more importantly, they have the two wins. So they're going to try and make it three in a row this week. But in order to do it, they will have to beat that number three seeded team that we just talked about. From Nashua, New Hampshire, Joe Ashline. And from Claremont, New Hampshire, Steve Vadney. Okay, and Joe comes in averaging 128 as a high single of 203. And Steve Vadney comes in at 128 also and a 197 for a high single. All right, of course, the winners of this match will move on to the semifinals. That'll be next week against our number two seeded team. We'll tell you more about that uh, as time goes on in the hour. But we've got three strings of doubles candlepin bowling coming up here on the Tri State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions. We'll be back to get the match started right after these words. Don't go away. <laughs> Before we get to the match, just a little bit more on that uh, one-string roll-off between Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney bowling against Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. Uh, a 134 for Morrill and Quinn, a 116 for Ashline and Vadney. And as we mentioned, uh, Morrill and Quinn at one stretch had five consecutive marks in that game. So as a result of that one-string roll-off victory, Morrill and Quinn move into the number two spot. Ashline and Vadney drop to the number three spot. And that's why they're the opponents for Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre in this match. The winners of this one, of course, move on. And next week, we'll face Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. Two weeks from today in the championship match, Gary Carrington and Jack Ray will be here against whichever team survives. So once again, here's that unfamiliar face. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Morgan. Face to you all getting to know. Getting to know those nine pin drops and strikes pretty well, too, because he's been bowling exceptionally well. Well, if you tuned in late in the first hour today, he knocked off his brother Tom in the singles tournament of champions for his second straight win on that show. So next Sunday at noon, Mike is guaranteed to be back here next Sunday anyway because he'll be back to face Dave Richards in the semifinal of the singles tournament. And, of course, if he and Paul St. Pierre can put another win on the board here in doubles, then he'll be back again next week in doubles, too. He starts off with a mark in box number one. 
And he fills it with a strike. <laughs> Ho hum. It's another day at the office. <laughs> Walk in the park, whatever you want to say, but he's, he, he's just got so much confidence, and he's on that head pin. Well, nine out of ten balls, anyways, with that first ball. Well, Joe Ashline will look at the three and the nine. The half Worcester pit for a spare, and he's got it. Very nicely done. Just hits the three pin. The wood and everything takes the nine pin for their first mark. And we're perfect through three completed frames. All marks, two spears and a strike. Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney qualified for the Tournament of Champions just three weeks ago in the final chance of the season. As they beat Mike Sargent and Stan Mayo, they rolled a 4-12 to win it. Strings of 136, 129, and 147. Drop that one right on the foul line. Have a little bounce into it, but drop seven, six, seven, ten. Piece of wood right in the middle of the lane. Could give him some help. Let's see. Oh, he's too high. Tried to deflect the ball off that piece of wood for the seven and have the piece of wood take the 6-10. Didn't happen for him, but yeah, it's going to be an eight. Joe Ashline was in the finals of last year's singles tournament of champions. He lost to Pat Pay. Now Paul St. Pierre. Working on a strike. It's a seven drop. Eight. 45 through three. Half was to right. For Paul. Eight and a seven for Paul in his first effort of the day. It's, gives him 52 through four. Just, uh, first look at uh, another familiar face to count up in stars and strikes. <laughs> Steve Vadney. A look from over Steve's right shoulder as he approaches lane 32. Backer, but he's still got the seven pin down there. So an early lead for Morgan and St. Pierre. They have been in the lead most of the time since this tournament began. Steve was light in the pocket. He ended up moving the two pin a little bit, but it didn't go over. That might give him a better angle for the 10 pin. Carry it. Does. Nice shot. I think he was going to carry the eight at first. But there it goes. Mike Morgan in the fifth, and he'll shoot at the 2-5 for a spare. Not nope. this time. Ten box, 62 half for the team.
right back on the head pin, but how about the diamond leave? Two, five, six, eight. I get two, four, five, eight, and the four is still there. Mike heard you when he was playing, trying to knock the six pin down. Forgot the four. <laughs> <laughs> two Seven, tens for Mike. 72 through six. And a chance for Joe Ashline to gain the lead. Down by eight, working on a spare, opposite two open frames. And, he and he's the got the same leave with everything else flying into the pit. Exactly what happened a moment ago. Wow. Mm. How do you get the front pin out and nothing else? <laughs> oh, nice 10. The reverse, the inverted triangle for a 10. That's a nice shot. Just dance the four pin right across into the eight and then finally the five. Joe's maybe thinking, geez, maybe if I had aimed for the four <laughs> pin, I might have made the spare. <laughs> oh, that was a lob. Well, it didn't cost him much. Joe said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Chopped out the one and the nine, so he'll get a fresh rack here. <laughs> It's a little better, but not much. <laughs> Twice as good. Knocked yeah, out four right. that time. But you only have one ball left now. And it's a tough seven. Five pin advantage now for Morgan and St. Pierre. Paul St. Pierre pulls it to the left a bit, but he winds up with just the one and the five with some favorable wood in between. There is a piece of wood in the back, but I don't. Oh, it helped. Actually, I was talking about the piece of wood on the <laughs> other side of the five pin, but that didn't come into play. Tomorrow will be just another spare. Line <laughs> drive in the scorebook. Oh, shot. Oh, shot. Half a dozen. Pulled it to the left. And there's a 10 box for Paul. 98 through 8. Brings up Steve Vadney. Steve from Claremont, New Hampshire. Wife, Annette. Daughter, Jennifer. Son, Stevie. Steve works at uh, Sturm Ruger Company and does a lot of his bowling at the Sunset Lanes in Newport. And he shoots at the triangle. No. Three, five, and six. Knock the six out of there. Missed the object pin, so they'll lose a few more to Morgan and St. Pierre, and the lead will be in double figures at 11. Back on the head pin, but once again, not a spare leave, really. No. Three, six, ten on the right and the two pin. Going to try to slap the two pin in the wood. Didn't work out. Now he'll try to grab three. And more than likely, we'll lose another one or two in count. Make it three. So the lead is 14. All the Tournament of Champions action here on the wins brought to you by Tri-State Megabucks. Just imagine being rich. Give it a whirl. Tri-State Megabucks. Longtime supporters of Candlepin Bowling and of course of Stars and Strikes here on the wins. They're with us all year as we mentioned but this is the premier event of the season and of course after Two weeks from today, when we crown champions in both the singles and doubles tournament of champions, we'll be taking a break for the summer. Mike Morgan. Speaking of summer, 
doesn't mean the can open bowling stops. All of your NHCBA houses have a variety of summer leagues and they're taking signups now. So any of you are interested in summer league, all air conditioned places and it's a great place to spend a summer evening. Join a summer league. Well, a point well made and also I don't want to give the impression that uh, Stars and Strikes ends during the summer either right. because we uh, present some of the best shows from the past season during the summer. So we invite you to tune in for those. Chance to catch up on some action you might have missed first time around. Mike Morgan will have a spare leave this time, the 2-4. If you travel, I itinerary takes you to Boston. Don't forget the New England Sports Museum. You're looking for the Canopin exhibit. The entire museum is scheduled to open in October. They have a free exhibit right now outside uh, the Harbor, I mean the uh, Cambridge Side Galleria Mall, right behind the Museum of Science. It's a great spot. It's a great location. Uh, the mall itself is beautiful, and they're doing a lot of landscaping around the area and so forth. It's a beautiful spot. It really is. It really is. It's going to be a nice exhibit, so uh, be watching for us. We're hoping the Canopin exhibit will be ready in October as well, but if not, it'll be there soon after. A brainstorm of Dave Collins. He is the director of the museum and great hustler. He's got a great thing going here, and it's going to be very, very nice. And uh, the years-long battle and struggle to get a permanent location finally ended with the uh, agreement to move into the Cambridge Side Galleria. And, uh, you know, at first thought, it sounds like a uh, kind of a, uh, a strange concept to have a museum at a mall. But a mall, yeah. the more you think about it, I mean, it makes it very accessible to people. And uh, they don't have to make a separate trip to go to it. And uh, it'll be right there. And it really is a, a great piece of floor space in the mall. Very impressive. And when you come up to Concord uh, to Bowell's Bowling Center, I can even give you directions. <laughs> in case we, uh, your travels take you through Concord uh, on the way to Boston. Doug and I do that, right? Take a left, <laughs> and we should take a right. It's going to be a lot of fundraising events starting next year, or e even in summer, bowling, bowlathons, and golfing events, and a lot of things to raise some money for the Canopin exhibit. Did someone say golf? Yeah, we'll be out there, Doug. See, all the people are going to write letters now, their bowling experiences in, in the summer, and we'll tell them about our golfing experiences. That'd be real, <laughs> a real blast, huh? <laughs> kind of like fishing stories. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Joe Ashline finishes up game one. Uh, the score close. Both teams struggling a bit in this first game. 117 for Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre. 101 for Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney. Game two coming up. Steve Adnay begins game two. Boy, for a minute it looked like he was really going to get robbed. <laughs> the four, five, ten. He got a break and kicked the four and five out of there. He's got to make a choice here. Either try to get the ten pin clean or use the wood, and he's going after the wood, which is the way I would have played it. Yeah, there wasn't much room to get by no. there, it didn't appear. That's mark number five of Ashline and Vadney. Morgan and St. Pierre have three marks as well. Good ball, strike on spare, and there's strike number one for the team. Can't be much better than that. Steve looked like he had a little more speed on that ball. Cut the one-two pocket, and the result was a strike, and that's doubly important because he was working on a spare. Paul St. Pierre to begin game two for his team. Paul lives in Manchester. Ooh. Just missing the two pin. Tried to cut the two pin over. Paul and his wife Maureen have three daughters. 16-year-old uh, Jessica, 12-year-old Amanda, and 6-year-old Nicole. That's a fine shot for the 10. Yeah, he kind of shrugged his shoulders like, well, maybe I should have played it there. Well, hindsight. <laughs> Fortunately, you can't have it back. Paul works as a tool and die maker at New Hampshire Stamping.
And he's trying to work out here in this second box. They're going to lose the lead. Takes it for a nine. And that's right. Anything uh, more than a five on this strike fill for Joe Ashline will give his team the lead. One of the few times in three weeks that the team of Morgan and St. Pierre will be trailing. Joe really whips that arm around. We've Doesn't talked we? about his style before. <laughs> he gets an incredible amount of arm extension and backswing. Generates an awful lot of power. That's an eight fill and enough to take the lead by three. And an eight box. Quick reminder, one of our other participating sponsors on the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions, the folks at Somerville Lumber who want to help you with your home improvement or betterment projects, little things you got to take care of around the house. Somerville Lumber, get it right the first time. Joe bounced that one a little bit. Lost it to the right. Laid that one down very nicely, though. Good recovery and almost converted that for a spare. 7 10 left. Two open frames for Mike Morgan to work on. Mike, who's had such an outstanding record over the years here on Stars and Strikes, adding to it right now in our two tournaments of champions here. Averaging well into the 130s. He's the only man to be in both tournaments. He's the number four seed in singles and on the number six seeded team in doubles. Seven, eight, he's looking at. It's a wood in between. Spare. Now he's taking advantage of the two open frames by throwing the mark here in the third, seven, eight. Now he'll fill the spare. Looks pretty good. Maybe a little light, but he dropped seven. Oh, but he's got a tough piece of wood turned a little bit, so he can't really get at the three, uh, two pin clean. He's going to have to go at the cap. Oh, oh got yes. It. Off the wall. Coming off the wall, we will take a timeout and perhaps get another look at that fine shot by Mike Morgan as we go away. About halfway through this match, it's a tight one. Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre looking for their third straight win. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. Well, we are just about at the halfway point. And there's the story. Seven pins. So what Ashline and Vadnay trail by. Ooh, punching out the one, five, nine. Pretty good effort. You start with that. If you can end up with a nine or a ten, you've uh, been pretty much. Uh, that's almost the equivalent of a spare right there. It was a very well executed ten bucks. A lot of cleaning up to do. Something like that. That's where you get your big scores, though, if you can work out of those. Look out! This could all go. It yes. does. Steve says, yeah, I knew I'd throw a good enough ball for a strike. Yeah. He actually did. That was a pretty good ball. The wood and the momentum carries for a strike. Oh, missing the head pin to the left. Drops a half dozen on the spare. One, three, seven, ten left. Oh, wow. Thought he had it. Didn't cover the ten. Oh. 
so. The lead is 13. Ball St. Pierre moves over to lane 31, misses the head pin right. He's got a spare leave. Oh, just missed the head pin. Coming back, but I don't think it's going to be quite hard enough to knock the head pin down. And it's still there. So a chance for Joe Ashline now to cut further into the lead. Working on a strike. Trying for another one, leaves the 10 pin. Oh, just sliding by. It's funny, I heard somebody in the crowd say, boy, that wood on the left looks good. <laughs> That's quite a, quite a ways away, though. It's a nine box. The lead in the match is down to three. Joe would love to put a mark up here in the eighth. He's not happy about missing that single. It looked like he might have enough to get it over there into the corner, but he just missed it. Not much of a break there. The five, the seven, eight, and ten. Piece of wood, he's gonna go right at the five pin and clip some of that wood to have it come off the left side wall and hopefully give him some help with a seven, the eight, and the ten. That's what he's trying to do and everything but the five. Oh, there he oh, he's got it. <laughs> Great shot. That is a terrific shot. He gets congratulated by Mike Morgan and by his partner. And everybody, that was worth it. Thought with the speed on his ball, the ball might drive right straight through and take the five itself, but either way, it's a spare. Well, if Mike Morgan doesn't mark in the eighth, team of Ashline and Vadne may swing back into the lead. Lead still remains at three. But now he has, Doug said, he has to contend with that spare. In the pocket, but another split. This one a little bit more palatable than the last one. The two, four, six. If you're on the two pin, I don't think the wood's going to carry the six. Got to try to split him. The wood might, he's going to come off the wall. Nope. He is kind of in the no man's land there with the angle of the wood and the pins that were remaining standing. As always, we come to you on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Park Place Lanes on Route 28 in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Very easy to find off Route 93. Exit three near Canopy Lake Park. And uh, while you're in the area, you may want to stop in and try Amore Pizza right across the street from Park Place Lanes. Nothing beats a pizza that's Amore. Soups, salads, subs, calzones, fine Italian food at Amore Pizza. Big nine drop on the spare for Steve Vadney, and looks almost a certainty he'll get another one. There it is. 122 in the ninth, plus the bonus ball and a full box remaining. Can't expect Steve Adney and Joe Ashline to continue throwing 101s. They did the opening game. It's going to be a lot better. Oh, and a big strike on spare. He's not done yet. He's now at 142 with two balls to come. Good chance oh, yes. for it. He's got it. You could hear Joe Ashline yelling double as soon as he let it go, and that was a great-looking ball there on the Brooklyn side. 152 plus a ball. Three 
Well, he won't get the triple, but he will drop six for a 158. Doesn't it seem like most of the double strikes that we've been having lately have been coming in the 10th box? Yes. Seems like it happens more often the, than not. Don't get the full advantage of it, but result, 158. He'll take that. Well, how about this? Ashline and Vadney started that game with a 65 half. Then they added 93 in the second half. No. Going by the two pin, uh, three pin. <laughs> 65 pins in the last three frames alone for Ashline and Vadney. Spare, spare, strike, strike, six. The lead is ballooned for Vadney and Ashline to 17, but that's the good news. Bad news is they're still facing 26 pins in this final frame. Well, trying to make something happen, but it will not. So it'll be Ashline and Vadney with the lead now after game two. After coming from a 16-pin deficit, they make up that and a lot more as they will take a 34-pin lead into game three, 259. For Ashline and Vadne, 225 for Morgan and St. Pierre. We're back after these words. Well, from trailing by just three pins about four boxes ago, now they trail by, trail by 34. Big turn of events there at the end of that second game by Steve Vadney. Ooh, 189. Oh, wow. That close. Almost. And 10. They need marks. It's funny how it can change so quickly. This match was just about dead even going to the last three boxes of that second game. And then all of a sudden, that little explosion, four marks in a row, including a double strike, and all of a sudden, the lead is 34. Oh, oh and again, boy, he makes a great effort. <laughs> on some shots that you think there's just no way you can make them and barely nearly pull both of them off. Two very difficult 10 boxes. Say that. Uh, 34 four pin advantage for this gentleman and his partner. Ashline and Vadney have changed the batting order for the third game. Steve Vadney will lead off this. Can't understand that, can you? I mean, only <laughs> through uh, spare, spare, double strike. <laughs> in the uh, six boxes he rolled in that second game, Steve had five marks out of six, and he almost had another one right there. He'll settle for a 10 box. That just takes him box off the score sheet very close look at that oh. how many times did that piece of wood go by there three times flipped around so. light in the pocket Let's see if the back row will go out seven goes eight and ten remaining oh well, what do you do on this one Dan well. <laughs> See if he can a get couple a, of options. He would like a clean shot at the, at the eight pin because he's got a wood right next to it. But you know, all he can do is play the piece of wood in front of the eight pin and try to split them. There is room to get by, but he'd have to hit that left piece of wood too, and I don't think he wanted to do that. Cost him the shot. Not leaving any pin standing, though. Two less frames that Morgan and St. Pierre have to work on. Down to eight frames, still 34 pin advantage for Vadney and Ashline. And Paul pulled that one to the left. Paul St. Pierre. Looking to convert if he can, and he does. Oh, I oh wow. <laughs> I had that one marked down. It was half over and stood right back up again. No luck for Paul St. Pierre on that one. 
and it's still there. Let's take another look. Watch the piece of wood that hits the 10 pin right there. I think you're right, that second touch. Yeah, steadied it and it stood right there. Well, there's a couple, couple pins that he didn't think he was going to get, the three and the seven, two and the seven. Leaves just the 10 pin and see where that wood settles down. That wood in the back <laughs> may be important. Because if it deflects that piece of wood in the front, it may deflect it right around the 10 pin. Well, now it's out of the way. Let's see if it stays there. It does. Well, we'll take a rip and convert for the spare. No, could have just have easily been two marks in a row, but it isn't. What could have, should have, and would have, but didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Ashline for his third and fourth frames. Big first ball. Leaves the four pin. All kinds of wood frozen and in front. Plays it in front, takes it all out. Joe from Nashua does a lot of his bowling at the Lita Lanes and also at the Pilgrim Lanes. In Haverhill, works as a salesman for Time Electronics. Wife Robin, sons Derek and Cody. Seven pin and a rocking seven pin in the corner for him. Two five and seven pins left. Trying to make it two in a row and no. Mm. We will take a break. That's a 10 box for Joe Ashline, 47 through four. When we come back, Mike Morgan will be working on that spare, trying to get his team back into it. They trail, we'll return in a minute. Well, Mike Morgan filling uh, what could be an important spare here. A good fill will keep the lead right about where it was at the beginning of the match. And then, of course, it's a question of do they have enough time to come back? Eight drop. Not an easy mark. Double piece of wood out in front. It's going to kill the ball a little bit. Got Got it. Drove it straight back. Two in a row. That, that, is, that is only the seventh mark for the team, Dan. And, of course, the first two weeks, they've had 15 marks total. Looking for three oh, in a yes. row, and there it is. It'll be strike on spare. Well, that'll help the cause. It certainly does. Six, uh, four, ten left there. There goes the four, and finally the ten for the strike. Three in a row for the team. Steve Adney. Might have wanted that one to stay up. Let's see where this wood settles down. Not an easy shot. <laughs> May have to cap it. Let's see. Nope. I'm going to try it the other way. I don't know if he was intending to do that or not. No. <laughs> no, I think he's too far left. Yeah, maybe it was there. Well, 10 pins off the lead, and now a strike working here in the sixth, so could get interesting yet here. Good looking ball, but. Not an especially exciting leaf. <laughs> five, seven, nine, ten. Piece of wood between the five and the nine. Well, Paul St. Pierre is going to step up for his final two as we begin the last rotation. And he will be working on a strike. And there is still room. Well, there's lots of room. 22 pins. It's going to fill the strike. Of course, a double. Well, misses the head pin, drops seven. Got another bonus ball coming. One, three, seven, seven pin left. Oh, oh yes. yes. There's another one. There's That's another. a big one right there. That cuts the lead to 12. Perfect. 12, and they're still marking. 
again, just missing to the left. This will be a difficult one. It's going to try to hit the one and the three and hope. Nope. Yeah, still got some work ahead of him. Three, seven, eight, ten left. And it'll be a six, so that really negates the uh, effect of the mark. Just 21 pins in the two boxes. But still, I don't believe Joe Ashline oh. will want to leave two open frames, and he doesn't. That might have been a big one. The strike in the seventh. Even with that small fill on the mark had Joe uh, not marked in either of those two boxes this thing would have been just about dead even oh well it's on a strike that's the good news so he can throw another one and to make up for the half Worcester and he'll take nine almost got the spare that brings the lead back up to 16 and it will go even higher because of the six box. Push it right to 20 with this one. Mike Morgan's just gonna have to put up two big marks and hope for the best. So that is the situation. The lead is 20. two boxes remaining, which means, of course, that if Mike were to put up anything more than 20, that would force Steve Vadna into a double strike situation. If you need more than 40 pins in two boxes, you've got to have a double strike somewhere. Oh, and, oh, oh my. <laughs> that is half off the lane. I'll tell you, you take that one and then Remember the one that Paul St. Pierre had earlier when it looked like he had a spare on the 10 pin? This thing could be completely different. And you heard it from the crowd, I think. A hammer keeps it interesting, meaning throwing a strike on this spare. We definitely need a big fill on another mark. Of course, he'd like the strike. Looks pretty good. Oh, two solid nine pin drops. Well, a big fill here in the 10th by Mike would mean that uh, Steve Vadney would at least have to pin well in order to preserve the win. But it all comes down really to this fill. This will uh, go a long way toward determining it. Yeah, you really need eight or better. No. Lost it to the right, a five fill, a 142. That means that uh, a 109 will do it for Vadney and Ashline. Yeah, they're already at 114 clips, so. Right. Fifteen pins. That's all Steve Vadney needs. It's gonna well, make it interesting after. <laughs> how many times have we seen this happen? I know. Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre, by the way, wound up with a 367. We'll see if that's good enough. Well, Steve's going to have some work to do in the 10th. Uh-oh. <laughs> that's eight. He's got half of them. He needs eight more for the win. No, seven more, rather. He needed 15, so he needs seven more. That may do it right there. It does. That's good enough for the win. Interesting match, though, right down to the final box. We've had some great ones here in this doubles tournament so far. And Steve will add the mark. Move that final score up there a little bit more. It'll be up around 380 somewhere, depending on this fill. Whoa, 381 to be exact. 20 in the 10th. 381 as Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney knock off two-time champions Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre. Ashline and Vadney will advance to the semifinals next week.
and we'll tell you about it and talk to the bowlers in a minute. And back on Stars and Strikes doubles after two wins, uh, Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre unable to make it three in a row, uh, facing obviously a very tough team as all as all of them are at this point uh, in the tournament, and uh, just couldn't get the couldn't get the momentum started really in this one. Well, it was like real close. Then Joe made that that crazy shot there that went, mm -hmm. and then Steve got up to nine double four. You know, we we're down thirty. You know, it was like <laughs> what happened? You know, it did happen very quickly. It was oh, yeah. it was a very yeah. tight match until that double strike and the, that cluster of marks right at the end of the second. No, I didn't help my partner too much this week, yeah, anyway. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate uh, you both coming by. You All have right, your man. checks. Uh, fourth place uh, prize money and we appreciate it and we'll hope to see you both next year. All right, thank you. All right Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre and now uh, let's bring up Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney and two other folks. We're going to see Derek and Cody Ashline as well. Congratulations dad. Steve with the big win. Uh, uh, it was a question of getting the uh, the the right drops and the right uh, marks at the right time. Your partner had the strike ball working there for you. I had nothing. You could talk to him about balling because this was this was terrible. <laughs> Well, Steve, uh, you guys, uh, you did have the strike ball working, and that double strike uh, in the second game obviously gave you the lead, and then in the third game, you are able to hold on. Yeah, right. Uh, if we could have stayed on 32, especially me there, I, th I think <laughs> I went four strikes there on 32, nothing on, uh, I mean 31, nothing on 32 there. But uh, we'll see what happens next week. Well, you got uh, the guys you had to face in that one-string roll-off next week, Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn, so we'll see the two of you and uh, also Cody and Derek next week. Thanks very much. Thank you. All right, Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney with the win as they roll a, a 381 to a knock off Mike Morgan and Paul St. Pierre's 367. Let's take a look at the ladder and we'll catch you up to date for semifinal week, which will be next Sunday here on the Winds at 12 noon. Mike Morgan will still be around. Can't seem to get rid of him <laughs> as he'll be going for his third straight win in the singles tournament of champions. And uh, then here on the doubles tournament of champions at one next week, it'll be Joe Ashline and Steve Vadney against Mike Morrill and Jack Quinn. Oh, it should be another good one. Uh, this one back back and forth today. Just a matter of those uh, final few frames for Steve Adney in the second game meant the difference. I think Derek has started bowling. That means it's time for us to get out of here. I think it's the show's over. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next Sunday at 12 noon here on the Winds for two full hours on semifinal week of the Tournament of Champions. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Lanes. <laughs> Kimberly Carson, here's what you'll find coming up next on the Sunday Double Feature here on Movie Watch. First up, if you've never seen High Noon, now's your chance. Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly star in this popular and acclaimed Western. Then at four, Betty Davis and Lillian Gish are sisters living with age and memories on the rocky Maine coast. Let two great screen actresses show you how it's done. Also starring Vincent Price, The Whales of August is at four. Join me now for the Movie Watch Sunday Double Feature, because it's coming up next right here on WNDS.